There's an old Turkish proverb that says if the mountain will not come to Muhammad, then Muhammad must go to the mountain. Well, believe it or not, for tortoise owners, sometimes the opposite is the case. As many of you know, our work is never done here. During breeding season, it sometimes means we must bring the mountain, or in this case, create the mountain, for our little guys. All right, hey, what's going on, everybody? As you can see, I've got some work to do today. Turns out, I was originally going to do a video on getting these guys ready for egg laying, the elongated tortoises, but uh, notice that the fence posts are rotten out and I really need to attend to that as well. So today's video is going to be a little bit uh, repairing my tortoise enclosure. You're going to see how I build a fence and you're also going to see me, uh, well, do some dirt, move some dirt around so we can provide them with a great place to uh, lay their eggs. But right now, I got to wrangle them all up so they don't escape. So bear with me and when you come back, we'll be ready to rock. A good portion of my life has been all about action which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tender. Okay, so we got all the tortoises uh, securely put away in their little hiding area. And here's what I'm talking about, guys. Um, I noticed that the females uh, have been starting to nest but they've been abandoning the nests and that can pose problems because you don't want them to get egg bound, you know? The tortoise knows exactly the type of soil, the consistency of it. They, they know what they need just by feel. And if you can see here, here's a nest chamber, right? And this was abandoned because you know what? It doesn't go deep enough because she keeps hitting the roots uh, that are all bundled up here uh, at the trunk of this pine tree. So you can see even right here, guys, this is also area where she's tried to dig. And the reason she's digging here is this, if you notice, it's higher than everything else and this area floods. So there are elongated and cherry head tortoises in here. These are my buddies that I got a few months back and they're starting to already nest, which is fantastic. But if you just look over here, you can see where my elongateds are, it's higher, okay? Uh, there's not a lot of plants, so they're easy. it's easy for them to dig. So I need a couple barrels of dirt, a couple wheelbarrows of dirt, and uh, that's what I'm on about right now. So I'm gonna go get that, and uh, I'm gonna just put some dirt right around here and see if I can entice them to dig in that area. Then we gotta fix the fence. Okay, so it's probably not the most exciting episode of Camp Cannon, but it's a necessary, necessary one. I want to show you guys just what has to be done when the animals are in need. So I'm just going to keep on shoveling the soil into my brand new, check out that wheelbarrow, I'm pretty psyched. That there is the Maserati of wheelbarrows, people. Dual tire, oh, I don't even know. It's just a dope wheelbarrow, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Bought it two days ago, now it's getting used specifically for this purpose. I needed a new one. Anyhow. This is what has to happen, guys. You know, uh, if you're fortunate enough to have some land and excess dirt, all this dirt was used from the uh, Badiger of Finnis, the Royal River Terrapin Pond we built last summer. It's just kind of sitting here, so let's put it to good use. And we're gonna make really cool nesting area for those elongated and cherry head tortoises. And you can see once you dig down, it's moist. It's got a good consistency. I think the gals are gonna be very excited when they come back out and start digging through it. So it is important. It's amazing how much these tortoises know what they need, just instinctually. And they do it by feel. They'll sniff the soil first with their nose, then they urinate on the soil, and then turn around. And so using their back legs, if you've seen, you've seen it in so many of my videos, but What's really amazing is, it's almost like they're Goldilocks, you see? They're looking for the soil and the nesting area that's just right. All right, this is real life on the tortoise farm. Uh, just as a recommendation, don't go to the gym and do legs a couple days before you have to use a wheelbarrow. It's horrible. I'm miserable. Okay, let's start on the opposite side. 
pour some of this. I think maybe three or four loads is gonna do it. Okay, be right back. I think we'll get another, and then we'll be set. And then I'll rake it out, tamp it down, and then the good old fashioned rain and elements will definitely help tamp it in and make it firm enough. And should do it. All right, well, I'm glad it's only taken three wheelbarrows because I don't feel like digging anymore, or transferring soil. So we're just gonna dump this, and then I'm gonna rake it into some smooth shape. We'll be good. Get a little bit there, maybe a little bit on the other side. Oh, fun. Almost there, keep going, I'm going right where you are. Here we go. I don't know if anybody realizes, but hot in Florida in the summer. All right, get out of there. There was a little left in my dirt from the wheelbarrow. All right, let's rake that out, make it smooth. Make it more pleasant to the eye. All right. Here's all I'm gonna do, just move this around a bit. Definitely higher than the water's gonna get to it. We'll just smooth it out like this. And then tortoises will do the rest. It's a little time consuming, but I like to pack it down. The rain's gonna do the same thing. But again, guys, um, you know, you can even do this if you have water turtles. And I learned this from my friend, Maurice Rodriguez, who is on the board at the Turtle Conservancy in Ojai, California. He's definitely knows a thing or two about breeding and raising turtles. But what he does is in his ponds, he puts an area of soil and it's higher than everything else and it's bare. And guess what? All the water turtles go to there and they like to lay there because the offspring hatch, go downhill, and usually if you go downhill, you're gonna find water. So that's why a lot of times you'll see wild turtles lay on roadways, driveways, just off the driveway, off the roadway, and even on train tracks. Because if you notice, those are all built up higher than the surrounding area. So it's a great place to lay, and it's a horrible place to lay, because if they have to cross the road to get there, that's how they get flattened. All right. I think we're looking pretty dialed here. This is all you need to do. Now there's gonna be plenty of pine leaves in the months to follow that are gonna fall on this. And it's gonna get uh, tamped down and it won't look like anyone did anything. But I guarantee you, there'll be some eggs I'll be digging out of here. So you'll have to follow me on Instagram and Facebook when I throw up those videos. All right, that's it for that. Now, I gotta get onto this fence. I'm gonna keep it very simple. The only problem is I got two rotted out posts, so I'm gonna to need to dig the holes and cut out some other ones. Yippee. All right. That's rotten to the core. Um, So I decided not to bore you all with the digging of the fence posts and the sweating profusely and the chopping of roots in my way whilst I dug. And there were a lot of mental breakdowns in between. You see all the sweat. I'm, I'm dying out here. Well, we're done. And I'm excited. So uh, what I'm going to do is throw a few screws. Oh, and I got changed the old drill bit. 
hold on right here okay so we're gonna just put some screws in here just an old piece of, of uh, lumber I had you know don't have to get fancy they just have to be kept in so just get this one in we got this one in there okay now we're gonna go to the other side put two screws in there which is gonna be a little bit more challenging on account this thing there we go <laughs> this is the reason I've had to it looks like some kind of ants or carpenter ants or termites got in there and that's what spelled the demise of the wood post these aren't even um, these posts here are actually landscape timbers and they're not actually uh, supposed to be I'm gonna ask you a big favor Tom yes can you go over there to that 4x4 four four and grab the other bit yes thank you it's always nice when Tom's around. <laughs> Usually I'm all alone, but Tom's here. He even wanted to dig, but I, I told him no. There's no reason why he should suffer as I suffer. The thing is, the work never stops around here. That's what I'm basically trying to say. Like, if you want things to stay nice, <clears throat> and you care about things, which I hope you all do, you want to make sure things are secure, um, you know, listen, this isn't going to win any uh, awards for the nicest looking fence repair, but I really don't care. I just wanted to get it. I wanted to get it done. Uh, and I want the animal secured because we are going to run into problems if I don't do this. Look at this. That's pretty good. Because now I can come from the other side and nail it in. All right. So now I got to get in here, but I got this rebar in the way plaguing me so I'm gonna bend it out as the way but this is all it takes like a what is this a just a I think it's a eight? two by eight uh, two by eight I'm gonna go up with it with this one by one by six and call it a day because they won't be able to climb out of it they're not diggers so I'm not worried about that either um, so once I get these nailed in I'm gonna pull the dirt back on it and we're gonna end this video much to my delight, not because I don't like the video, but because it's hot. Did I mention it's hot? Warm. You guys ever see Ace Ventura 2? Sure is hot inside of these rhinos. Here we go. Oh, I love it. I love it when it connects. Really, it's a pleasing feeling when the screw hits its mark. Oh, see, that's not a pleasing feeling. It's when the screw hits its mark, people. Here we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Ah, oh, it's good, it's good. All right, watch this. We're, we are seriously getting close here. So what I'd like to say, this is what I call patinaed. Well, well-aged, I think it's, uh, it's all the rage right now. People are going that route. So we're gonna put this on the top side. And I think it'll just look splendid. Now watch this. Huh? Huh? There you go. But we got a straggler screw. I don't like that. Ah, straggler. But uh, it goes in, we go home. All right, we can probably say goodbye now. They don't need to see you screwed in. Yeah, you don't need to. <laughs> All right, we're out of here, people. Thank you so much. Don't forget to check out Camp Kennan. Uh, subscribe if by some reason you're not already a fan and you stumbled upon this video and you enjoyed it. Subscribe. Also, check out some of the other videos we have. We range all over the place from other animal lovers to building things to, uh, well, walks in the wild. Don't forget Patreon. Uh, go to patreon.com slash Camp Kennan. I'm out of here. And with that, this fence is built. Ta-da. Mm -hmm. See ya.